Over the past 25 years, NATO has been creeping closer to the Russian border. Former Soviet states have become NATO members. This military alliance has technically absorbed the entire security belt of Moscow. Russia sees this expansion as a provocation. It hurts their security interests and won't end well for both sides, they said. The warnings were clear. NATO ignored them. Call it their myopia or arrogance, they downplayed Moscow's concerns, kept proceeding with new rounds of expansion until things blew up in Ukraine. Did NATO push Ukraine into this war? Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay and today I want to discuss why NATO cannot escape the blame for what's unfolding in Ukraine. First things first, what is NATO? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, a security alliance between North America and Europe. It was formed after the Second World War. The goal, they say, was to protect democratic freedom. On the 4th of April 1949, the North Atlantic Treaty was signed. This treaty was simply an anti-Soviet accord aimed at countering any future aggression by the USSR. It established a new balance of power in Europe. It promised all members collective security. That's a core principle laid out in Article 5 of the NATO Treaty. It obliges member states to protect each other in case of a war. It says an armed attack against one ally will be an attack on all allies. Meaning, if one NATO nation is attacked, all NATO nations will retaliate. This allowed NATO members to pool and share their military resources. They built efficient defense capabilities, but there was more to NATO than just defense. It was an alliance of liberal countries an engine of democratization that was supposed to promote common values and interests, also push back against the rise of communism. Naturally, Moscow saw this alliance as a threat to its interests. In response, it created the Warsaw Pact in the year 1955. It was a counterweight to NATO, the Warsaw Pact. These were the members. Their goal was the same. If one Warsaw Pact member is attacked, all others will defend it. In Russian historical memory, there were five reasons why such a pact was justified, five major invasions when the West threatened Russian interests. This includes the Polish occupation of the Kremlin in early 17th century, the Swedish invasion of Russia in early 18th century, the Napoleon invasion of the 19th century, and the two wars with Germany in the 20th century. In each case, the very essence of the Russian state was threatened. So suspicion and fear of the West took deep roots in Russia. Moscow began perceiving NATO as a tool of American imperialism. And the assessment was not really off the mark. In 1989, the Berlin Wall collapsed. In 1991, the Soviet Union disintegrated and the Iron Curtain was completely demolished. Europe's regional order hinged on one question. Should Germany align itself with the US and NATO or should it join the Russians through the Warsaw Pact? The US government under George H.W. Bush made an offer to Russian President Mikhail Gorbachev. It suggested if Germany became a NATO member, NATO would stop expanding, not one inch eastwards. No new members. Today, the U.S. says it made no such promise, that no such deal was ever struck. But hundreds of memos, meeting minutes and transcripts from U.S. archives indicate otherwise. Nevertheless, Moscow bought the offer. It demolished the Warsaw Pact in the hope that the West would follow suit, that NATO too would be dissolved. But that never happened. NATO refused to cease operations. And to add insult to injury, they kept the door for membership open. Russia saw it as a stab in the back, and NATO kept pushing the dagger deeper. Look at this map. NATO started out with 12 founding members, but since the Soviet Union fell, it has radically expanded eastwards. In 1999, Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic joined NATO. In 2004, there was another wave of expansion. Seven Central and Eastern European nations were made NATO members. Some of them were former Soviet republics. In 2009, Albania and Croatia joined NATO. And the most recent entries were Montenegro and North Macedonia both situated in Russia's backyard. It does not end there. As of 2021, NATO officially recognized three more aspiring members, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Georgia and Ukraine. Last we checked, NATO was also in talks with Sweden, Finland and Serbia for membership. So to put it simply, much of Eastern Europe which once used to be part of the Soviet Union, has now joined NATO. And this happened despite Russia's protests and warnings. The last reasonably friendly warning from Moscow came in the year 2007. Vladimir Putin addressed the annual Munich conference. 
where he said, and I'm quoting, NATO has put its frontline forces on our borders. This expansion represents a serious provocation that reduces the level of mutual trust. And we have the right to ask against whom is this expansion intended and what happened to the assurances our Western partners made after the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact. These sentiments have been echoed by a host of American strategists. I'll give you a few examples. June 1997, 50 prominent foreign policy experts signed an open letter to President Bill Clinton calling America's efforts to expand NATO a policy error of historic proportions. Then we have George Kennan, the father of America's containment policy during the Cold War. He too called NATO expansion a tragic mistake with no reason whatsoever. The warnings went on for decades. In 2008, William J. Burns, the U.S. ambassador to Moscow, wrote a letter to the State Department where he said that Ukrainian entry into NATO is the brightest of all red lines for the Russian elite. He said that even Putin's sharpest critics at home consider Ukraine's entry a direct challenge to Russian interests. It does not end there. This is Robert M. Gates. He was the defense secretary in the Bush and Obama administrations. He wrote in his memoir that trying to bring Georgia and Ukraine into NATO was truly overreaching. Then we have Strobe Talbot, a former deputy secretary of state. He described the Russian perception in a similar way, how they consider NATO as a vestige of the Cold War and point out that if the Warsaw Pact was disbanded, why did the West not dismantle NATO? So several voices in the Western world had warned that Russia's protests have merit and that NATO expansion could spell serious trouble. Yet, successive American administrations paid no heed to these warnings. They kept widening NATO's security umbrella.